Right, so in this one, we're going to talk about variables and also how the workspace functions. So let's start by creating a number or variable called a and assign it the value 2. As you can see here, the variable a currently holds the value 2. You can go ahead and change it as such, right? And if you insert an apostrophe, you're actually telling MATLAB not to print the output. So as such, you can see that A changed the value to 3. You can change it that way or by double clicking on the workspace, on the variable in particular, and going here and changing the value. So you enter and there you go. Close this. You can also access all the variables that are currently in your workspace. So let's say I have another variable B, which is a four-dimensional matrix as such. So this is a 4D matrix. In case you want to view the contents of the workspace, all you have to do is go ahead and type whose as such. So as you can see, each variable has its own description and its corresponding row. So A is a size one by one because it's a number. And MATLAB, it will allocate eight bytes in memory for A. And it is a class double, right? And there is no attribute so far. Whereas B is a four-dimensional array, MATLAB will allocate 2,880 bytes for this variable. And why is that? It's because you should think about it as how many entries do I have times the space I need for one entry. So for one entry, MATLAB needed eight bytes. And the number of entries I have in B is simply three times four times five times six. So three times four times five times six, therefore you get 2,880 bytes. It's also of class double, no attributes so far. Now, let's say you're working on a project and you know, you've got a bunch of variables right here, right? And you want to go ahead and, I don't know, save them in a certain format. On MATLAB, the format is .mat, which is .mat, the typical format for MATLAB. All you have to do is type in save and precise the name of your .mat file. So let's say I want to name it, this is a bunch of data.mat. So if we go here to the current folder, we can see that the file has been created right here and it holds the same name, of course. What does that mean? It means if I go ahead and enter as well to the folder 00.basics, I have it right here. You have the data saved in a .mat format. So that being said, let's say you exited MATLAB and opened it again, you're not going to see anything in your workspace. That's normal. So let's type in clear all, which means I'm clearing all the variables I have in my workspace. And let's double click on the .mat file. As you can see right here, all the variables are loaded again. So this is a way to save all the variables in a certain project or whatsoever. An alternative way to do so is by typing. Well, I don't have to type it because MATLAB executes it once you double click it. So it's load the name of the math file. That's if you want to do it programmatically, okay? So this is how you, you know, instantiate or create variables. You can change their values. You can also save them and load them again. Now, let's say I want to work with other types of variables, not necessarily doubles. Let's say I want to work with strings or texts. So all I have to do is simply type in, let's say I want a variable called text, and it contains the typical hello MATLAB instead of hello world message, okay? So text contains is, let's type in whose, as you can see, it's a char. MATLAB defines it as char. And, you know, this is a char and not a string. You can go ahead and also add, like, numbers in a char manner, which means that if I have a, you know, a temperature, let's say, in Fahrenheit, which is 70, let's say, Fahrenheit, and you want to do a conversion in, I don't know, or you want to type it, all you have to do is say temperature in Fahrenheit is... I could go ahead and do something like this. Oh no, so this is only in Python. 
So if you're using a newer version of MATLAB, I'm using 2015, you can go ahead and do this, but with double quotations. If you're using older versions, and of course it's compatible on newer versions, this is not allowed, so you'd have to do something like this. Instead of a plus sign, in case you want to concatenate, all you have to do is use commas as such. But f is a number, so you, you, you're going to have to convert it to a string as such. So temp is, in Fahrenheit, is 70f. Let's do a simple conversion. So f minus 32 divided by 1.8, right? And now let's print in the same message, but with Celsius. And Celsius is none to strc. Oh, I inserted an apostrophe, so we will not print it. I should remove it. And there you go. You can also extract letters. So let's say this message was stored inside a variable called text. So text one contains the letter T. Text two contains E, three, and the fourth P. The last one contains C. Of course, last plus one does not exist. So there you go. So that's how we define so that's how we define characters to use them in texts. That's how we concatenate characters, convert numbers to characters for concatenation purposes, and extract letters or subcharacters from characters. So that's it for this one. In the next one, we'll be talking about functions. I'll see you then.